Alrighty, Easy Jeezy here. Uh, I guess we'll call this part two of my uh, rebuilding Volkswagen transmission series. And uh, it's probably going to be a long series. The next thing uh, I want to do is uh, kind of briefly touch on uh, tools. What kind of tools in addition to the normal mechanics tools, uh, sockets and things uh, that you'll need. And uh, here's a uh, here's a assortment of snap ring pliers, and it ain't enough. I don't know why, but these darn things sometimes you just get a booger, and you'll struggle with it, and it just drives you crazy. But uh, you know, here's a couple others that I've tried. Wherever you see some, uh, I've been looking for a good set. I saw a set that uh, somebody had in their toolbox at work. It was a set of a pro proto, and they weren't the adjustable kind. These these multi uh, type, they're gonna they're gonna work, but uh, you're gonna struggle with them. Uh, it's a struggle. These snap rings are a struggle. Some days you do better than others. Uh, here's an expensive tool and I had to grind it down. This is just an expander, a ring expander, and uh, I had to grind this side of it off to get into a spot at some point. Uh, this was a real expensive set that uh, I, I bought. This was a nice expander and I think I bought that at the same time I bought one of these sockets. Uh, this socket is used for the pinion nut retainer and that was like hundred and twenty dollars at the time for that socket and uh, it's not bulletproof it did stretch and uh, I got two of them <laughs> so what it's for is this nut right here <laughs> looks pretty harmless but uh, you've got the reverse gear is in the way don't worry, you're going to see all of this stuff. I'm just going over some of the, the tool aspects of it first. Uh, you know, a dial indicator. I've had these things for years. You don't have to buy, spend a lot of money on it. This one's uh, <laughs> Japanese, and it's just fine. Uh, as long as they're tight and you can get some measurements, and that's probably not the main one that you're going to be using. You can use micrometers, whatever you feel comfortable with, but some sort of a, a measuring device will probably save you some trouble in the long run. Uh, and it's good to add to your, your tools as well. Uh, this is a uh, shift fork adjusting jig. Um, this is nylon. I bought this about 20 years ago. I think it cost me a hundred bucks then um, as part of the kit. Um, I think this was part of it. You can use a car jack and I again we're gonna we're gonna go over all of these things. Here's a special wrench that uh, you need to get things apart. This is very hard. You use your ratchet in here and you know when I first started and I'm not ashamed of this uh, buddy came over and he had a bus transmission and we had trouble <laughs> getting the darn thing apart so we just set out and we said okay what can we do the thing was real tight and we just took an old socket and we took some nuts and we started laying them in there and welding them and I think I used it a couple of times and uh, I think that's what this does matter of fact yeah I think that's what this does um, but uh, we're gonna look at that you know here's a reverse gear and I drove a, a socket in there so that I could use an impact wrench and 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 rotate the transmission this for your shift force this is a hand uh, deal that came in the kit for uh, turning your uh, main shaft while you're uh, adjusting your shift forks and shifting um, you got different adapters for the different types of transmissions so that you can so that they fit in here and center up okay and uh, it's all stuff now 
there's people that will tell you you can cut up an old transmission and use that. Well, <laughs> I tried that once and uh, it worked. And the next transmission that I built, it, it didn't fit in there and I couldn't figure out why. Well, it's because the shift uh, fork shafts were longer and I happened to cut up an early transmission and uh, it wouldn't work with the one that I was currently rebuilding. So. That's a waste of time as far as I'm concerned. If yeah, let's let's take a minute here. Let's take a second and let really talk about your intentions. You know, this is meant to be educational and entertaining. I have to do this work anyhow to my car. Um over 60, well over 60. So I, I want to pass this knowledge on. It may aggravate some people that I'm showing some of the things that I'm gonna be showing and uh it's my intention to uh, open your mind, give you an understanding of what's involved inside the function of a transmission. And uh, one thing I want to clear up right off the bat with this rusty deal, I know somebody's going to make a comment and say, well, why don't you put a bus transmission in there? <laughs> I don't want a bus transmission in there. Plain and simple. The, In my opinion, the sedan nose cone and shifting mechanism works better in a sedan transmission um, I don't want the extra weight I don't feel that I want like a 538 or a 486 ring and pinion uh, I'm going with a 437 ring and pinion and I think that's going to work out well for me I've found personally, I've used bus transmissions in the past, it gets first gear too low where it's worthless. And a two-wheel drive sand rail or Baja or Volkswagen is not going to be a rock crawler. If you want a rock crawler, get a Jeep. Uh, you're a lot, going to be a lot further ahead of the game. You have a lot more options. Um, this is just to do a little off-roading and still have something that can uh, cruise down the highway pretty good. Uh, with a bus transmission, you lose uh, both ends as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the bigger tires help uh, give it back to you and a lot of people are delighted with it. Great, more power to you. But I'm not interested. Been there, done that. Uh, so, don't want to end on that note. Medium duty torch. You're just going to need some heat. Uh, some of the parts inside the transmission, uh, like the pinion bearing, uh, when you reassemble it, you need some heat to stretch the case and let it drop into place. Um, let's move on to looking at some of the gears. Okay, what's the difference in gears? Here's a late model fourth gear. You can see how fine the teeth are. They're at a nice angle that makes it quieter. Um, and I think that's probably the only thing you gain from it. It's probably not as strong, but it's quiet, and that's the way the factory did it. And you look inside, you can see splines inside there. Okay? Now, we're going to look at a, a keyed performance fourth gear. <laughs> <laughs> okay this is a race gear you can see that the teeth are a lot coarser they're heavier and they're going to be stronger and likely to have a little bit more noise to them now on this side you see where somebody put grooves in here that would allow it to have oiling because there's going to be uh, severe side loading on that gear and this is going to help lubricate it. On the other side this is what you call the clutch hub and it is pressed on in stock form. When you have a race gear what they'll typically do is TIG weld them and then they'll surface grind them flat again and that way the clutch hub is welded to the gear. Here you can see where the dogs of this is what 
is doing the driving part. Your, your gears fit together so. And when your clutch hub engages, we're going to go over this real detailed later. But these are the dogs. This is what engages and makes contact. Now don't worry about it if you don't have a clue what I'm talking about on that. We will go over it closer. Here is a example of a stock um, bearing. You've got a, this is an older one, so it's got a metal cage. Uh, as they progressed into the newer times, they went with nylon cages. And you had your needle bearing spaced around it, and that's what allowed it to freewheel and spin. You look at the other side, this was keyed. This would be the equivalent of this fourth gear. You can see that this one was splined, had all these splines around it, and this one was keyed. A lot of the racers preferred the keyed gears, fourth gear, because they felt that it, it was a press fit for one thing, and there was no play in it, and they felt it would be stronger because of that. On this one, there's just a very slight click, click, click movement, just very, just were enough where you could feel it. I don't even know if it's measurable, but it would have a little play in there, and the finer teeth, one of the reasons they stayed away from that. Okay, now let's look at a third gear. Here's a third gear. Uh, this is a 143, by the way. 143 fourth. That's what I had in my sand rail for many, many, many years. This is what I was going to use for third gear, but when I put it together, I didn't like it. All third gears are splined, just like this fourth gear is splined. You have an option on the early and late fourth gear being splined or keyed. All, however, all the third gears on both early and late models were splined. Now, you can see that they have the coarse teeth. This one's a brand new one, never was used. You have your welded hub. And then what you used to do, we would do what they called hand-packed needle bearings. You would take these bearings, a <laughs> little bit of grease on them, and you would line them around there. Then you would drop in this spacer, and then you would put another row on the outside, every single one. And you had to put them on and get them pressed together without any of them falling out. And when I built this one and put it on, I felt that it rocked too much. And I didn't want my transmission popping out of gear. And third gear was the gear that I lived on, lived in on the sand dunes. Now, here is a uh, clutch hub. And this is what would engage... <laughs> This will confuse the heck out of you, I'm sure. That's how, this is how it worked. We're going to go over this later. Don't worry about comprehension on it. See how that worked? The big faces of the main gears all mesh and are in contact all the time. What causes it to power it is when this hub slides over. We're going to take a real close look at that and how it works in just a little while. Here's some more of the hand-packed needle bearings. I used to buy these from Gene Berg. These are probably for fourth gear. And here's some extra ones. And this is another example. Here's an example of the late model ones where they put the needle bearings in a nylon sleeve. Here's an early style where they used a metal sleeve. Different gear, obviously, but uh, just wanted to show you that. And, you know, I don't feel that this is a good way to present it, but it's a start, and we got to look at it, and as we go along, 
it'll start making sense. I know you got a lot of questions right now. Don't worry about them for a bit. Uh, we're going to do a lot more videos. I'm probably going to do them on, you know, a lot shorter instead of the long 45 minute videos and hours and stuff like that. Um, we're going to go little short sections at a time. But I just wanted to whet your appetite for some of the racing things that we did. And let you see for yourself why. And we're, our main goal is not to necessarily change the gear ratios at this point. We're going to change all the gear ratios by putting in the 437 instead of what's in there. So that's the goal. And as we move through it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Good stuff. See, I've got buckets of old transmissions I took apart. And uh, what you want to do is keep them together. Each transmission, the parts that you take out, keep them together like they're married. You don't want to be swapping. I see a lot of going to shops and guys have buckets full of gears, you know. Maybe they have buckets full of fourth gears and buckets full of third gears. Well, in a stock car, in a stock application, it may be good enough. And that was the greatest thing about modern factories and machining is that the interchangeability, the close tolerance work that they were able to do so that things interchanged. But as years have gone on and things have gotten wear on them, it, uh, they kind of wear in together. And if you want to have success building transmission, it's best to keep as many of the parts together that came out of the same transmission. Yeah. What a chore this is going to be. <laughs> and by the way, Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy out.